And, and that doesn't faze us. You know, if, as long as he comes, he joins the family, we're able to engage all the family members, you know, so they feel like we're also attending to them. And every family member feels like they're respected and they're important. And that's exactly what happened when, when, they, when she came in with her, with her two And all this is, is done in Spanish? And, it's all in Spanish. And, uh, but, in this, but, in this but, case, Spanish and English. And English. English. I was just going to say, because, because if you have another generation, they probably... Yes. So we need to check that out. We need to, because the kids insisted on speaking English. And so we would always check with, with Mama whether or not she was understanding, whether she was following what the kids were saying. And if necessary, we would interpret. How long does a uh, program usually last for a family member? Let's say somebody comes in and has a, a, again, not a typical problem, but a, a problem. Oh, uh, do they, is it a six month program? Is it three months? Is it. How long does that take, and is there any follow-up on that? Yeah, now we just, can, we just have some data yeah, on that. Yeah. <laughs> One of the um, strengths, I think, of the program is that we have shown a trend that's a little different than what um, normal data shows, and that's that Latinos don't stay in treatment very long. Mm -hmm. The dropout rate is very high. One of the things that we found, um, based on some research that we're doing, is that our numbers are much higher. So um, we do have... Um, probably a, a large chunk of our um, clients that stay for 9 to 12 sessions. Now that can be over a long um, period of time because they don't all necessarily come in every, every week and that's the norm. So you have some that stay for 30 sessions, some that stay, and that can be anywhere from you know, 6 months to a year. Um, so really I think that's, that's one of the benefits as well as of a program like this that we don't have a, a set time. You know, it's pretty customized. Basically. I think the that's family. true of the exactly. entire counseling center right. is that we don't pre-decide. Nobody's telling us, no insurance companies, mm -hmm. no government, nobody's telling us how long this person can be in treatment. And that's always decided between the client and the clinician together. And so they may come in with one goal right. that they get resolved and other issues come up and they don't have to just stop. They can say, you know, I, I want to continue to work on this or, oh, I thought this was going to take a long time, but I feel great now and can I come back in a month if I need to? And so it's a very collaborative experience between the client and the therapist. Now what is the cost of something like this? Uh, would someone not call because they think, well, this is going to be a big chunk out of our family budget? Mm -hmm. uh, what? Uh, how, do, how do you deal with that? I mean, well, we, we, it's an obstacle to overcome, obviously, when when you, somebody does call. It, it's it's an obstacle. It seems to be more for us. We have a sliding scale. Uh, Comp fee plan and it's based on the client's ability to pay so there's a chart that tells you know, how many family members there are and how much income there is and then we figure out a fee and then we have a scholarship committee the institute scholarships the difference between what the client can pay and what the standard fee would be which would be about sixty dollars an hour but that's the standard fee our average fees probably run around twenty dollars an hour or less and i have to tell you i've been there ten years and in the ten years i've been there we have never turned away a client even when they couldn't afford the lowest rate we we worked out a way to provide services so how does that compare to a like uh, your for-profit uh, mm -hmm. uh, kind of uh, establishment. What is the difference? What, so if you're charging what, what, between what 20 clear, or 60, uh, what, what, what clear difference? If I go to Beverly Hills, what, how much would they charge them? Yeah, well, and not, not so much in, in terms of difference in cost, but the opportunity it offers us to be able to work with the family in a variety of ways. This mother was talking about, clearly the kids need to see someone as well. So now we have the opportunity to be able to have some of the counselors work with the mother and separately have other counselors work with the kids because the cost is low and then we have that option to be able to address the needs of the whole family. So how many clients do you have on, on, uh, uh, on a typical basis? Uh, uh, in the Latino family therapy yeah. or in the whole? Well, let's take the whole program and then Latino specifically. I think we see about 200 clients a week at the center. And then we are, as I said, in 20 LAUSD schools with right. about 30 therapists that, that are in those schools, and each of those sees a number of children. So that's probably another 200 chil children that are seen a week. Plus we're in um, two probation camps out in the San Fernando Valley where boys 13 to 18 have been sent, and they have little or no counseling services there at all. Oh, really? mm -hmm. And we started a program there probably about eight years ago that I started, and we're still there, and we see probably 
oh, I would say 20 boys a week or more, 20 to 40 boys a week um, individually. And more than that if we count the groups, because we do a parenting group for them, we do an anger management group, and we do a substance abuse group for them also. And that's throughout the year at two different camps. And so probably close to 800 clients a week, I would say, between all the different things we do. A lot, that's a lot of clients. Now, do you have enough people to take care of all these clients? <laughs> yes. As I said, when I first came here, we had about 40 therapists on staff. Now we have about 100 yeah. um, therapists plus our licensed therapists. Now, you're looking to expand, uh, and, and if you are, how are you going to expand the program? Uh, I'd, I'd love to expand. <laughs> in some different ways. I'd like to go out to more schools. Right. I'd like to provide more facilities. We're, we're actually looking for some homes for the elderly with the population, the age, aging. Right. We're trying to provide more training in that area for our therapists. And we'd like to find more sites, assisted living facilities that will allow us to come in and provide group and individual therapy. Um, and the other thing I'd like to work on, which is part of the way we're growing in this world, is how do we provide services where the client needs them? Mm -hmm. Not every client can come to your office. Right. So that's why we go to the schools and the camps and the elderly facilities. But also I'd like to provide mm -hmm. some services if we had more funds to support us, because we are a nonprofit and at less than $20 a session, you're barely sort of scraping by. If we had some funds, I'd love to provide services for po people that are homebound. Mm -hmm. People who or people who can't get to where we are. Now, getting to your funding, where do you do you get most of your funding? Obviously, the twenty dollars or sixty dollars that you charge for for these uh, services is not going to cover it. Yeah. So, where else do you get your funding? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> we really uh, in it, right to foundations. We try to get foundations. The California Endowment has funded our doctoral program to train doctoral students how to work with Latino students. Um, uh, to sp Spanish-speaking students to work with the Latino populations. Mm -hmm. That's one big funder that we've had, and in fact, through them, we are going to be having a symposium um, October 1st, where Angie and Jose Luis will be presenting their findings on how do you train folks to specifically work with Latino yes. populations. And maybe they can talk a little bit about the symposium. Yeah. Is that the first time you've had this kind of symposium? or Yes. yes. And where is it going to be? Um, it's going to be at the um, LA Marriott, and it's actually um, a pre-conference to the Latino Behavioral Health Institute um, conference that they have annually. And so, who's the conference for specifically? Um, clinicians, primarily mental health providers. Um, we we don't get a whole lot of um, actual clients, students, um, but, but there are some Stem. um, students. Um, just different programs. What's the capacity it's, for this conference? How many people can? It, it's it's the biggest conference that attracts um, health and mental health professionals and, and students and providers um, in delivering services to Latinos. It's the biggest one in in the nation. So we, the, the co-sponsors are county, state, and federal government, federal agencies. So the the three-day conference attracts close to a thousand. A thousand. A yeah, but yes. Mm -hmm. And from all over the state or all over the country? All over the, all over the state. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now who, what, what will be discussed there? What are some of the things that y you will be covering? One of the things that we will be doing is offering a variety of workshops where we're going to be talking about the experiences we've had working with Latino clients so that others learn from, from the experience, uh, some of the things that how we've trained and how we've served couples and families and working with children. And, and just pass on to that, that knowledge and, and that experience to those that would like to, to do the same. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're actually preparing a full manual that will be given to all the participants who attend their full pre-conference day on October 1st. Um, where they're really going into the details of how they provide training for these people. What is it like to train them in Spanish for supervision and training and this live supervision they do which is very unique where they actually see a client th behind a two-way mirror and the students actually watch the treatment and they come in and make interjections and comments to help the therapist and they're going to be showing how they do that specifically with the Spanish speaking um, uh, clients right. and training these okay. and they'll be given a manual that they can replicate the model that we've um, created it. Now, do you have a specific model that's not been used before? Is there something that's sort of a template for other organizations to follow? And exactly. There's, there's several components of the, the training model that we have for 
those that want to to provide clinical services to, to Latinos and just the 